So uh, as Eric mentioned, I'm executive editor of VentureBeat. We are a, um, a media site uh, that seeks to interpret innovation uh, broadly across the venture-backed universe and all of the bits of technology that kind of touch on that. Um, I'm executive editor. I run editorial day-to-day -day with our founder and editor-in-chief, Matt Marshall. We're based here in San Francisco. Um, with that, I'm going to let our panel uh, introduce themselves. Uh, Ethan, Rodham, Dan, Rick, Pete, if you can uh, just tell the audience a little about yourself, give, maybe give an elevator pitch for your companies. Sure. I'm Ethan Block. I'm a co-founder of Flowtown, and Flowtown is helping businesses discover and mobilize their most passionate customers. I'm Rodan Perlmutter. I'm the CEO of Top Prospect. Uh, Top Prospect uh, helps companies get recommendations for the hard-to-hire roles. We're a marketplace where you can expand your uh, network of referrals, pass your employees to their friends and friends of friends. Uh, my name is Dan Finnegan. I'm the CEO of Jobvite. We have two products, Jobvite Hire and Jobvite Source, both of which help you generate hires, employee referrals through social networks, as well as manage the entire hiring process from creating requisitions all the way to offer letters. Hi, I'm Rick Marini. I am the founder and CEO of BranchOut. BranchOut is the largest professional networking service on Facebook. We allow you to leverage your Facebook network to find inside connections for things like jobs or recruiting, career networking, or sales. And we also allow you to create a professional profile within Facebook that only includes work history, education, and endorsements, and none of the uh, crazy drunk pictures that you don't want in there. I'm Pete Kazanji. I'm the co-founder of Honestly.com. Uh, Honestly.com is a professional reputation and peer review website. So if you imagine LinkedIn and Yelp having a baby, that's kind of what Honestly.com is. And the idea behind it is um, to, to try to bring some of the same mechanisms that have proven so successful in other kind of community contributed review websites like TripAdvisor, um, you know, Yelp, Amazon product reviews to bring you know, information transparency into the hiring process such that people can make better decisions when, when hiring, figuring out who to work for, et cetera, et cetera. A naughty, naughty baby, that is. <laughs> uh, so obviously here on, here on the panel, we have, uh, you know, we have five entrepreneurs who are building great tools for finding talent, but there's a lot more out there. Um, as I was talking with them before the panel, you know, what we discovered is there are lots of challenges in recruiting today what can we reasonably hope to use technology to, to do to fix this? And what is kind of beyond technology? Uh, you know, what's, what is, a, you know, let's start with cost. Is it, is it reasonable to say we can take cost out of recruiting? Recruiting costs in the United States about $4,000 per hire. But since we're mostly in the white collar, highly skilled marketplace, it's on average $8,000 a hire. It has been, by the way, that fairly consistency for, consistent for quite some time. You know, it's a big challenge. Now, the difference is, if you hire a recruiter outside your organization, it costs 16000 or above. Um, if you use your own internal recruitment department, because 70% of all hires are generated by internal recruiters, it's around $4,000 um, or $8,000 for white collar. But referral hires through your own employees are only 980 bucks. So the biggest way to drive down cost is to increase the amount of referral hires that you can make. And everyone in HR and managers know that they're the highest quality hire, they last the longest, they churn the least, they come in with the right expectations. So you're kind of getting at both ends, higher quality and lower cost. And in a world of social networks, every, sing every single one of your employees is walking in with an enormous kind of Rolodex, if you will, that they're connected to people that they can leverage and that they're going to leverage in all aspects of their job and are willing to do so, including in recruiting. But as Gary said, if your organization doesn't have the culture that wants to encourage people they know to consider it, then that's not going to be very easy. So we, it sounds like we can use technology and the internet social layer to take some of the friction out of discovery and connection. Like, you know, Ethan, you were talking about essentially finding a target, but then you need to actually reach out to that target. 
Yeah, I mean, you totally go. I, I have an analogy. I can't think of it right now, but you just go where they hang out. So designer on Dribble, a developer on GitHub. Um, and again, so that's really why I've spent my time. But there's such rich amounts of people there that it's, it's great to go there and you can just start meeting people, right, and reaching out. And then it comes down to like how quality are your emails, how quality are you on the phone. And again, that's sales, right? So you have, the, you have these interpersonal interactions and everything's great. And then you hire them and, you know, you check their references. Everyone loves them. You hire them and they're just a dud. Why does that generally happen? We way, fired a lot of people. Yeah. yeah you know, you know um, Krista, who was on the panel before at Zappos, um, they, she talked a lot about their culture, their, their 10 principles. But one thing they do through their, their CEO did, which I think was brilliant, is he offers um, a signing bonus. Um, you know how do you get a signing bonus when you take a job? He's offering a leave bonus. That if you come after, I think it's, I can't remember the exact number of days, it's some number of days, you come to Zappos and you're not happy, they'll pay you to leave. Um, because of, he pointed out the economics, the cost of keeping an employee who's not productive, not happy, is much greater. Yeah, um, and for, for my experience, so before I did Branch Out, I was uh, one of the founders of Tickle.com, and Tickle had about 80 employees, we got pretty big, and um, every time that we gave someone a second and a third chance, uh, it didn't work, and, um, and that probably happened at least a dozen times. And after a while, we realized, A, we were probably being too nice or too optimistic, and B, we were not only wasting our time, we were wasting their time. If it's not the right fit, and you identify that pretty early on, and you've, um, you know, you've tried to work through the issues, and it's not going to, uh, just not gonna rectify itself, move on. Um, it's, it's the right thing to do for you and the candidate. Um, other people in the organization are working hard, and uh, to have teammates that aren't pulling their weight uh, is a real downer for everyone, and, uh, and really hurts the culture of the company. And, and for a startup, that's death, because you gotta establish the, the culture. When, you know, when I got to Jobvite, I went home that first night and said, my wife, I can feed the place on two pizzas. You know, we had nine employees, and you really had to quickly figure out who's, who's really in it and who's not. Um, and you have to make those tough calls. And by the way, we did a lot of what you described. I mean, we definitely would um, trial people. Come in for three months, see if you like it. We'll see if you, we like you, you like us. And I think startups can definitely get a lot of productivity, get you know, three days a week to find out a lot. That's a lot less expensive than the mistakes that you, know, you discover nine, 12 months later. Yeah, it breaks my heart when uh, someone doesn't work out. Like really, like it was really upsetting. And, and not just for me, it's, it's for them. I mean, the process they, ca they came through and if we actually make an offer at some point and it ends up not working out, I, I, I feel it's my obligation to them to let them know as soon as possible and then let it. And typically for us, it's not that they're not qualified, it's that there's just not that fit. Because they come through that process when you're a four-person team, like you vetted the hell out of that person in terms of skill. And then ultimately, it's do they mesh with the team? Can they work with me? Can they work with my co-founder, Dan? If it doesn't work, like I want to help them find work elsewhere. I want to help them land somewhere because they're usually really quality people. And it just sucks when it doesn't work out. So the question is, is that why, why didn't that surface on the other side of the offer letter? Right? The, the fact that they weren't going to, that they might not end up working out. And I think a lot of the time it's, a, you know, it's an, an information availability issue. So um, the recruiter uh, from Zappos was talking about this earlier, um, talking about how not only do they, they ask kind of the right behavioral questions to, to, to sort of surface fit information, which was interesting. Um, the woman from Facebook was talking about how not only do they ask those questions of the individuals in the interview process, but they also ask them of the references as well. So rather than saying like, can Ethan deliver when doing a back channel reference on him, I ask kind of behavioral, cultural questions of, of those folks too. So they, when they, they surface information that doesn't sound like it's damning or you know, helpful, um, but you know, I parse it as the recruiter and say, oh, okay, this person maybe doesn't, won't play well in the Facebook ecosystem. And I think that's why you see this being so useful, um, that the 12% number that Dan was talking about where 12% of referrals get hired because there's tons of information flow. The, the, the candidate knows that the boss isn't gonna suck because you know, he's, being, he's being offered the job by his buddy and vice versa. Um, so I think that 
that's where technology can really help with a lot of this stuff the same way that like you know Wikipedia or Yelp or what have you, you know, Foursquare check-ins surface kind of what is good and what is maybe less good. I think that's where this can help avoid that situation where four months in you're like, wow, this isn't working out. But identify that earlier and nip it in the bud.